Welcome to Flashback Friday. Hey, we're jumping all the way back seven years to 2012. And this is a killer formula where we get to see a formula to extract the top five numbers and names, including ties and duplicates. Now, what you see in this video can be used in 99% of all of the Excel we see today. And the good news is, next week I'll post a video of how to do this same topic with the new dynamic arrays. All right, have fun with this Flashback Friday. In this video, we want to see how to take a data set and extract the top five values and list them in a column. And then from those top five values, extract the names. Now, this isn't a, a classic extracting top values and associated names. It could be used for visits, revenue, sales, sports scores, all sorts of situations where you have values and names. You want to extract some top number and extract the names. But the problem is when there are ties. We're going to see how the VLOOKUP function fails when there are ties and how to use the index lookup function and the small function if you have 2007 or earlier or the amazing aggregate function in 2010 or later. Now here's our goal. Right now I have up here, I want the top five. But if I change this to, hey, give me the top three, notice how our data set immediately updates. Now there's going to be some array formulas here. And so really, if you're using formulas, it's because you have your data set that's going to be changing, right? If I put 100 here. 100 or five here, five. that's why you use formulas. Formulas will automatically update as, as soon as you change a formula input. If you're um, you know, doing this just one time or something like that, then man, the filter feature is awesome. All right, let's see how to do this. Now, the first thing is we need to figure out what the hurdle is. If I say top five, well, there's a tie, right? 63 and 63. So I need to know what that value is that determines the hurdle. The reason we need to know the hurdle is if there are ties, like over here, notice there's five, and I have 100 down here. It's showing six values. And the reason why is because there's a tie at the fifth position. So we're going to need to know the hurdle and the count. All right, you ready? The hurdle, we'll use the large function. Large just says, of these values right here, in an array argument, comma, which large do you want? I want the fifth largest. 63. Right? If I change that to 1, it would be the same one. as the max, right? Control Z. Now I need to count how many are greater than or equal to that 63. The equal part of the criteria, greater than or equal to, will give me a total count when they're duplicate. So I'm going to use the count if, and I'm going to count from this range right here, comma. Now the criteria, I have the number right there, but I need to join to that criteria the comparative operator in double quotes greater than or equal to. Double quotes, and then you use the join symbol, which is shift seven, the ampersand. All right, so now the criteria is any count all the items greater than or equal to that. Five. All right, so there are five. If I change this to 100, 100. Ah, now it tells me six. And our table over here will reflect that change, control Z. Now, we need to list one through however many. Now, I'm just doing a small data set. You might have a larger co column here. But we really one, want two, this, three, right? We want one, two, three, four, four five, five, six, six. etc. But we want it dynamic. Well, we already know how many we want right now. Five. We're going to use a number incrementer, a formula element that is a number incrementer. And that formula element is the rows functions. And I'm sitting in D6. So I'm going to type D and then dollar sign 6 to lock the row reference 6, colon D6. What this does is this has an expandable range that is actually self-contained in all the cells that have the formula. One. So as I copy this down, you can see that that range is expanding because that's locked and that's not. Now, we need to turn this on and off depending on what number is here. So we'll use the if. And I'm going to copy that control C. And I'm going to say any time the rows are greater than this count here, and I'm going to F4 to lock that. Any time I'm greater than that, 
That's the logical test, comma, what do I want? I'm going to use the syntax for show nothing, double quote, double quote. Otherwise, please give me control V, that rose. All right, control enter, one, double click and send it down. So now we see we have one through five. If I were to change this to 100, 100. I have six, control Z. Now, an important idea in this formula is that there's a blank or a null text string in this cell. For these formulas to turn on and off, depending on what I put here, I'm always going to have these formulas looking blanks or numbers, right? So now we can use uh, the large function here. Up here, we just typed in 5, but here we can use the yard large and copy it down. I'm going to say large of all these right here, F4, to lock it when I'm copying it down. And the K, well, I already have the K right there, the first, the second, the third. Control Enter, one. double click and send it down. Now, we're going to use the fact that, and if you expand this over here, it gives me a value error. I'm going to Control Z. I'm going to use the an if function here that's going to look in this column to see if it's a blank. Equals if this cell right here, one cell to my left, equals, and then a null text string or the syntax for empty or show nothing, double quote, double quote. That's the logical test. If that is met, which means down here it'll see that uh, null text string, I'm going to put another null text string, show nothing. Otherwise, that's the value of false. 91. Double click and send it down. So now we have our dynamic list of 100. values, right? Control Z, and if I change this to three, three. all good. Control Z. Now, we have two choices here. Actually, I'm going to do the VLOOKUP first just quickly to show you because this is what a lot of people do. They're like, ah, oh, I got my values. I'm just going to do VLOOKUP, which means I'm going to look up that 91 comma within this table right here. First column has the number, second column has the uh, name we want to retrieve. I'm going to hit F4, comma, column index. Well, the names are in the second column, so I type it 2. And then we have to use exact match because these numbers are not sorted. I'm going to put a 0 instead of false. That'll work okay. just fine. Double click and send it down. Now, so here's the problem because when VLOOKUP looks up at 63, especially when, or when we are doing exact match, it's always going to look at only the first duplicate. I'm sorry, that's right there. Now, I'm going to cut this and paste this right down here, right? That's the VLOOKUP. I'm going to leave that down here. And I'm going to copy this. Now we have a choice here. In 2000, and I need to move this over here. In 2007, we can use the small function inside the index uh, to deal with that, but it requires a special array formula keystroke control shift enter which is absolutely fine if you remember to do it sometimes it's easier to not have to remember to do that special keystroke for formulas so there's the aggregate now I'm going to do the small the index and small first and then we'll see how to use the uh, more recent and somewhat more convenient aggregate equals index it's a great function it's a lookup function what am I looking up that array argument right there has the names we're looking up. I'm going to hit the F4 key, comma. Now we need a row number. Now, the problem is for 91, it's in row 1. For 82, it's in row 4. When we get down here, there are duplicates, right? And so 63, uh, 63 is going to be row 2. And then as we go down to the next cell, we need row 5. So that's where the small function comes in, just like um, the large function in this column was able to see duplicates. The small function can do the same thing. Ah, but what are we ultimately interested in? Index needs what? A row number. So I'm going to say, have a condition first, and then say, if this condition is met, then give me the row number. So I'm going to say, if anything in this range right here, F4, is equal to relative cell reference. That way, as I copy down, it'll have... Uh, the right criteria. Now, what do I want? That's the logical test. And by the way, it is that argument right there, logical test. We've given an, an array calculation. If I hit the F9 key, you can see it gives me a lot of 
a bunch of trues and falses instead of what the logical test argument is really expecting, a single true or false. The fact that we put this array operation here, that makes it an array formula that requires control shift enter, control Z. It's that logical test. There's, once you put more than one logical test here, you will have to use control shift enter. All right, now what do we want? That's a logical test. What do we want? Value of true. Well, I need row numbers. That's what the index function's asking for. I'm going to highlight these, and it doesn't matter which one of these you highlight. They're both exactly the same dimensions. I'm going to hit F4. Now, that won't work because there's row 6, 7. That's what row function does. So I'm going to subtract from it row and click there, F4. Now, that won't work either because what's 6 minus 6? Well, it's 0, so I have to add 1 back in. Now, that little construction right there will give me all the row numbers. If I hit the F9 key, boom. That gives me 1 to 7. Ah, but with the if, it will get only the right row number from amongst all those row numbers. We do not need the value of false, so I close that off and the if. So now if I highlight this if here and hit the F9 key, boom, you can see it gives me 1 false, 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 false. Now, that's cool because there's only 191, but down here there'll be two row numbers in this array right here which will allow us to extract the first and the second as we copy down. Control Z. Ah, K, either a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, right? Now check this out, 91. But when we get down here, we somehow need, or no, so 91, we need 1, 1, 1, 1, because there's only 1 in here. But here we need the first one and then the second one. So we are going to use for the K the count if function with an expandable range. And what am I counting? These numbers here, right? Count the 63, that's the first one, then the second one. So in this range, I'm going to click on uh, E6, shift colon, then a comma, click back on E6, close parentheses. Now I need to make this expandable range, just like we saw with our rows function. So right there, my cursor is touching the E6, and I hit the F4 key. That will give us our 1, 1, 1, 1, 2 as we copy down. Perfect for our small k. I'm going to close that small off. There's our row number. This entire small thing there is our row number. Close parentheses on the index. Control yeah. Enter. Ah, now I just made the mistake because I like to use the aggregate. I'm going to copy this down. This will just be a mess. Right, because I forgot to use what? Control Shift Enter. Ready? Control Shift and Enter. Now, when you use Control Shift Enter, okay. that's you telling Excel, I just did an array calculation. Those curly brackets right there are Excel telling you, I understood you did an array calculation. Now I can double click and send it down, and I ex get exactly the right names for the 63. This one, then this one. Now, these nums are easy enough to deal with. We do the same thing. In fact, watch this. I love this. I'm just going to copy this since I'm such a bad typer. That's the same condition based on the blanks in this first column. Control C, escape. I come here and I control V. I have two equal signs. By the way, if your formula has got some error in it, see how all of the ranges are not colored? As soon as I get rid of that, now they're colored. Now it says, OK, I understand. All right, you ready? All I did is steal that uh, logical test. I'm now going to do Control Shift ahead. Enter, double click, and send it down. So that one's using is just fine. Now, Control Shift Enter, if you want to avoid that and you're using exclusively 2010 or 13, we can use the same the same logical test here. Watch this. I'm going to copy this. Control CC. I'm going to clear. CC opens up the clipboard. If you don't have the uh, CC option turned on, you have to come down here and, and turn it on to use Control CC. But now I'm going to Control, let me just show you that again. Control CC. Whoop, there it is. I'm going to use that inside the aggregate, the same exact logical test there, and now the same creation of our row numbers as an array, control C, and I'm going to need this K using the count if with expandable range, control C. Now I have them loaded up there. Check this out. I'm going to totally cheat. I'm going to do one more thing. I'm going to copy this little first bit, control C. Now I'm going to come here, boom. I did something wrong there. What did I do there? 
Let's try that again. Delete. I don't know what I did there. Different. All right, so there's the beginning. Now, when we get to the row number, we can use aggregate instead of the small function and not have to use control shift enter. So there's aggregate and you can see there's a list of functions and if I go down to 15, no way. So aggregate lets us do a bunch of different calculations. 14 and later allow me to do array calculations. So I'm going to do 15. That's the function number, comma. The options down here, we're going to need to ignore errors. Wow, you cannot see that. So I'm going to use 6 because we're going to have divide by 0 uh, errors. That's too bad that I, it's coming off the screen. All right, comma, and then the array. Wow. Watch this. I'm going to suspend this space, and then I'm going to scroll over. And come back here and backspace. Now I got a little bit more room. All right, so the array. Well, what are we interested in? Remember? Aggregate still sitting in that uh, row number, so we're interested in to, for creating an array with row numbers. Now, different than the small, we put the row, the creation of our uh, row numbers first. So in parentheses right there. Now I'm going to come over here and click on that rows. All right, so the first part of the array when you're doing aggregate is I put the row numbers in parentheses. And then if I F9, you can see there they are, Control Z. I don't want all of them. I want just the ones that meet my criteria. So that array, I'm going to divide by the condition, open parentheses, and here's our condition. All right, so now if I highlight this row construction divided by the condition in F9, boom, there's our 1, which is perfect for 91, and there's our divide by zeros that will be totally ignored by the aggregate 6 right there. Control Z to undo that. All right, comma, and notice there's the K. So I click on my count ifs, boom, I've simulated using the aggregate function right here the small construction we did earlier, I close that off. There's the row number, close that off. The aggregate is delivering the row number. And, oh, I have one more function. I was ready to hit Control Enter, right? But the screen tip saved me. I still have to close this off because the value of false is um, the index aggregate construction. Close parentheses. Now watch this, Control Enter. Hit. No curly brackets up here. I double click and send it down and boom. And there we have it. So if I come up here and type three, three. Wow, just like that, it shows me exactly what I want. Five, Five. I change one of the inputs to 100. 100. Boom, it shows me all six. All right, we'll see you next trick.